checking out this video where I'm going to give you a complete tutorial on how to start a food truck. In my specific case, it's a coffee truck, Cafe Lomez, that's been in business for a little over a month. This is a very long video, so if you don't want to watch the whole thing, feel free to skip to the parts that directly pertain to you in your uh, journey of opening a food truck. Or if you just want to watch the whole thing, that would be great. Uh, and you can see what I did along the way, and it'll hopefully be entertaining and informational. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy. So I'm going to start with an overview of what's going to be covered in this video. So what I did is I started a coffee truck called Cafe Lomez. This started in late 2022 in about um, late September, early October. And I think we're going to start really hitting our stride into early 2023. So one of the things that I'm going to cover you know, is I want to answer the question of why should you start a food truck? Um, the two main reasons that come up from my own personal experience and when I read forums is this, is it could be a financial decision or it could be for your passion. So for a financial decision, I'm gonna go over why this really isn't the best reason, and I wanna cover on why passion is the better reason. Another thing I'm going to go over is what types of trucks or trailers or what is the best option for you. Uh, for instance, with the trucks, uh, these are kind of classified, as I like to say, the ones that have an engine and you can drive them to the events. Uh, I'm gonna go over new trucks and also used trucks. I'm gonna go over the pros and cons of each. Uh, the other options are the trailers, and I define these um, as simply those that do not have an engine and transmission and something that you will need to pull to your events. I'm going to go over the pros and cons of getting new and used trailers as well. Another thing that I'm going to cover is how much is this really going to cost? And I emphasize really there because there are many videos that I've seen out there that are unrealistic. Or if you do follow their advice, for instance, if you want to try to start this with $5,000 or less, you're going to fail or it's going to be miserable and it's not going to work. It's not going to pass health inspections. Uh, so I'm going to show you what this is really going to cost. Uh, I'm going to use my business as an example, and I'm going to show you some other real comparisons that are out there. Like I'm going to open up Facebook Marketplace and show you what's on the market if you want to buy used. And I'm going to show you some realistic examples of some uh, businesses that are offering real new uh, examples of trucks and trailers so you can see how much those are going to cost. So another question I'm going to answer is how much work and time is it going to take you to make this operational? I'm going to give you an inside look into my business, Cafe Lomez, and what I had to do to get this ready for customers. I'm going to go over some of the things like the visuals, like painting it um, or putting your visuals up on social media, building a brand, coming up with logos, getting things like this t-shirt or business cards. I'm going to go over that kind of stuff. Uh, but also you might be more interested in the functionality of the truck or trailer itself. Uh, what I did myself DIY versus what I had to pay for uh, for professional help for the things that were above my level of expertise. So I'm going to go over those in more detail. Also, uh, I'm going to go over what kinds of permits and permissions you're going to need in order to get your business started. For instance, from the beginnings of creating your own uh, business, getting your own tax ID number and using that to start your bank account. I'm going to go over some of the things that you'll need for insurance for your business as well as for your truck or trailer. You don't want to really start this venture spending all this money, have something bad happen and then not have insurance to be able to bail you out. So I think it's a very good idea to get insurance before you, you start in business. I'm going to talk about the food permits um, that you might need for your city, county, or state. And also, you might also need an agreement between a local business owner or landowner that you're operating at. Another question I'm going to get into is how much money can you expect to make? Uh, and this is, you know, maybe one of the first things that you think about you're doing this for if it's a financial decision. Um, I'm going to go in and using myself as an example and also I'm going to talk about some friends of mine that have also been in this business a little bit longer um, and talk about some of the factors that are going to determine what makes good or bad days. I'm also going to give you real life examples from my own business, uh, Cafe Lomez, and show you some of the good days we've had and some of the bad days we've had and some of the reasons that go into that. And then I'm also going to talk about if I would make any changes if I was to do this again. Uh, am I happy with my uh, decision to take the coffee truck and get that operational? Or do I regret that decision and do I wish that I would have gotten a trailer instead? 
I'm also going to talk about if I would have made any changes in painting, like if I would have uh, hired someone else to paint it or if I did a good job myself. I'm going to go over the logos, what I did, if I would change those and the design. I'm going to talk about the equipment that I got in the trailer and if I would have gotten different equipment and um, how much I really would have gone back if I would have done myself or if I would have hired professionals to do more of the work. So I encourage you very much to watch this all the way through. And I also want to take a time to pause and say that there might be some of you out there that are going to watch this. You're going to get a lot of good information. Uh, and I really hope that you will take a second and subscribe to the channel or push this like button. A lot of this information, uh, if you're going to try to piece it all together, it's going to take you a lot of time. You're going to have to go to forums. You're going to have to watch a lot of other videos. And I'm putting it all here together for you. Um, sometimes you might have to pay for this in a course or you might need to, to pay your friends or go out. It's going to take you a lot of time and I'm putting it all out here for you for free. And all I ask you to do is please hit that little red button or hit the like button. It helps me out a lot. I'm trying to make more of these videos um, to be informative, to be educational, to be entertaining. Uh, and to do that, I really need your support. So please hit that button and enjoy the rest of the video. So I'm going to try to answer the question of why start a food truck. Uh, the first is from a financial perspective, and the second is from a perspective or a place of passion. From a financial perspective, this can be a very good low-risk investment. And what I mean by low-risk is that if you can get into this with owning everything without having to take in big loans from the banks or having a lot of investors that own your company. So if you own your truck, you own all of your equipment, and in a worst-case scenario, you sell it, you can come out pretty whole as long as you didn't overpay for anything or have really costly repairs or your equipment you didn't overspend on um, and depending on how good of shape you kept everything in uh, and depending on the market and who you might find as a seller you might actually make a little bit of money if you have to sell everything and get out that's what I mean by low risk uh, also from a little bit of a brighter note if things go well you can make money and you can control how much money you make so let's talk about controlling how much money you make first from a perspective of a schedule. You create your own. In our first month of business, I'm going to get into the specifics later, but we did uh, 12 days and roughly made about $7,000 in one month. If I wanted to push that more, I could have, but that would have created more stress. And if I wanted to keep it a little bit more relaxed, uh, then I could have worked less and made less money, but that's at my discretion. Um, similar to you, you can target more events or less, but just keep in mind that it's not just about those events. There's prep work that goes into it, there's cleanup, um, there might be maintenance work on the truck. So just make sure that you're factoring all those into consideration when you're trying to figure out how many days a month you're going to try to work. Uh, second, um, what goes into it is uh, making money depends on your menu. If I was to do this again and not do coffee, I'd probably do popcorn. Uh, why I would do that is it's very low cost, very low prep, and the markups and the margins are incredible. Um, but if you have a truck where you have a lot of meats or uh, vegetables, uh, and you need to buy a lot uh, every week, you have a lot of storage containers and utensils to, to think about, and if that food goes bad, that might be a more complicated uh, process. Uh, and you might not have as high a margins, there might be more time invested into it. So you can kind of create your menu that could yield uh, off well for you or it might be more costly and you might not make as much money. Another thing to think about um, is this uh, financial vest in investment is if you're going to have employees. So employees can be a, a good thing uh, or it could be a bad thing. Uh, for me, just starting out, I look at it as it could be a bad thing. Uh, and I'm very thankful that my girlfriend, she helps out uh, as much as she can on the weekends. She has a full-time job, but she helps on the weekends. And that is tremendous help for my business getting started. Um, but if I did have to pay employees, I would have to think about uh, not only their financial compensation, but things like health insurance, unemployment um, kind of claims and things like that. Um, payroll eating into the to the margins it might affect also how I set up the business as an LLC or if you're thinking about doing this as a partnership or doing business as uh, having employees can complicate all of that um, so let's also think about this in terms of if you want a ballpark figure of how much you might make in a year 
well, given all of those other things that I just went over, given the schedule, given your menu, what you want to sell, um, if you have employees, if you don't have employees, there is quite a large range. Uh, Toast, which is a point of sale system, collected data on all of the food trucks uh, that um, elected to be into a program to disclose this data. Uh, but what they found on the low end is food truck owners make around $25,000 a year and up on the higher end, upwards of $150,000 a year. Uh, and again, given that range um, is because of some of those factors. Um, but also the main point to drive home is even if you're around 25 or 150, it's not multi-millions. You're not gonna get super rich off of this. Um, it's, you can make a pretty good living. Uh, it is a low risk investment. Uh, but I think it's much more important and much more beneficial if you come at this from the perspective from a position of passion. And that's the real reason why I think that you should start a food truck. So from this perspective of passion, what I'm getting at here is you can have your voice come through as a restaurant on wheels without very many barriers between you and the customer. Um, this, I think, is can get much more cloudy if you're starting a brick and mortar store, if you have a bunch of employees, if you have people that you hire to do your marketing and stuff like that, it's, it's much more, there's a lot more steps that go between your voice or vision and the final product that gets to the customer. Uh, with a food truck, there's hardly any. You do it all, you're at the center. You come up with the idea, you come up with the logos, you come up with the website, the social media, you interact on the social media. Um, as you're building the truck in the neighborhood or that people see you as they're walking by and ask you what you're, what you're doing, um, you're driving, hopefully when the truck is drivable, um, they see you driving the truck. Uh, when the truck is set up and they come to place the order, they see you working in the truck, you deliver the food to them, hopefully they come back. It's everything revolves around you. You have complete control, which could be a, a good thing or a bad thing, but it's the way that you have your vision can shine through, I think, without any impairment uh, or, or other steps. Um, and I think this is the main reason that it should be done is because if you have a good vision, if you are a good cook or barista or whatever you are trying to do, you can really get that to the customer uh, without it getting watered down at all. So I think that is kind of the driving force behind why this should be the main reason you get into this uh, from the get-go. Um, also, depending on how well you do, I think that this passion um, fuels into the competition aspect of food trucks. Um, as there are many different shows out there like food truck wars or food truck races, um, there is this uh, competition for the best spots. Uh, I kind of look at it like fishing. Um, if you're in the right spot on the right day, you got a lot of uh, activity, you're gonna you know, get a lot of bites, you're gonna get a lot of customers, you can make a lot of money. Uh, but there are other days where you could be out there for hours, you might be throwing the best equipment, you must, might be serving the best drinks or food, but if there's no fish bite and no customers, you're out of luck. Um, so there's really competition to get to those honey holes, those good spots, those good events. And in order to be at the top, you have to have the passion to get there. Uh, as the business owner, um, you, it's, it's, it's again, a kind of a blessing and a curse. Uh, look at this from the perspective of a, of a hourly employee that can clock out uh, after a bad day. Uh, they can just kind of say, okay, I'm done. I'll come in tomorrow. Uh, hopefully it'll be better. As a business owner, it ain't going to get better unless you make it better. Uh, and you're going to have bad days. And that's also why I want to bring this up from a position of passion. You have to have that passion to be able to still have that fuel in your fire after you have a day where it might be snowing, it might be rainy. Um, you may have had a, a flat tire on the way to an event and had to call AAA and they had to get there. You might have had to be, be late or it eats into your sales or whatever comes up you can't throw in the towel. You can't just say, okay, whatever, it'll get better. You have to make it better. You have to make sure that, that new tire on the truck's gonna be better than the original one and get you to all your future events. 
Uh, you got to shake it off. Um, if it's bad weather and you don't have that many sales, instead you have to flip it around. Thank the people that did show up. Um, show their appreciation. Maybe tell them they can get buy one, get one free if they come on a next visit or something. Um, put it on your social media that you're out there. People know that you do show up in the bad weather. Um, if you have a, a tarp or a tent or something for customers to wait under uh, while they're out there, you know, try to flip a bad situation into a good situation. Show everyone out there that you do have that competitive edge. That's your passion that shines through in a marketplace that there is competition for those best spots. And you can do that and you can have success if you have that uh, passion. So again, this is a way for you to, to kind of in summary, have your vision get to the customers without any hurdles. It's the clearest possible way to do that. And I think that that is the beauty of the food truck, that each different one, you get to meet the chefs and owners right there up front. They're the front of house. They're the, the waiters. They're the, the cooks. They're the owners. Like everything all in one is right there on display. And um, that's one of the most beautiful things I think about this food truck kind of um, niche is that it's right there and there's so much variety. And then the second part to that is within that variety, it breeds competition. And I think competition can be a very good thing uh, if you're passionate and you go about it the right way. You go in there bringing your A-game. Um, you're, you're friendly to your guests. You're friendly to the other food trucks, to the people that might own the, the property that, that you're at. Um, you make a name for yourself. You're kind of working with the community. Um, so it's like this full circle of, I think, a, 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 a good situation that revolves around passion, that if you can get your vision to the customer, you have that fuel for the competition to get those good spots to reel in the, the fish or the, the customers. Um, you have that great customer service. You can overcome adversity and turn it into a positive. Uh, I think that that all kind of encompasses the essence of making a food truck and getting into this business. Um, from a financial perspective, it can be a good low risk investment, but if that's your sole reason for getting into it, I think you, you might have a higher chance of failing as opposed to if you're getting into it from a perspective of passion, you wanna be the best, you wanna give customers um, a, a flavor extravaganza with whatever food you are selling, um, you want to get out there on social media, promote your products, you want to have a great experience, you want to overcome adversity. If those are the kind of reasons that you're getting into it, I think you're going to have success and you might even make a little bit more money than the people that get into it just from the financial perspective. So to answer the question of what types of trucks or trailers are out there, before I get into this, I want to say the most important thing is that you see this in person before you make a purchase. You're not going to want to spend tens of thousands of dollars on something that you've never seen and then be surprised uh, when or if it arrives. Um, so make sure you go there, you kick the tires, you take measurements, you take it for a test drive, you see how everything works before you shell out any money. Um, so now let's get into them. So you're going to have trucks or you're gonna have vans. So trucks are the big box trucks that you might notice like UPS trucks or Amazon delivery trucks. Um, usually the driver can be able to walk into the back from the cab. Uh, these are larger vehicles. Uh, they can go up over 26 foot in length of the box. Uh, smaller ones uh, can be as small as 10 foot for the box. But in general, they're a little uh, clunkier to move around. So if you're going to be in urban centers or you want to be able to have a lot of maneuverability, uh, then a van might be better for you. Uh, vans come in transit vans. There are sprinter vans. There are cargo vans. Um, there may even be uh, a plethora of other ones, but those are the main ones. Um, vans have options of different engines that might be more fuel efficient if you're going to get EcoBoost. Uh, they have different drivetrains, uh, front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, all wheel drive. Um, depending on your uh, preference, uh, a van might be the best way to go. And now similar with the trailers, you have the option of new versus used. Uh, new is going to come with the benefit uh, of not having as many uh, possible issues right out of the box. And if you do have issues, most likely they're going to be covered under a warranty. 
uh, the benefit of buying a truck uh, used is that you're going to be able to have a much uh, greater break in price. They're going to be cheaper, uh, but you do have to have that risk uh, that carries with it is bought sight unseen as is. And if you have problems, uh, you're going to be able to have to take care of that yourself. So now let's talk about the trailers. So with trailers, there's a couple main types. You usually have the cargo trailers. These are enclosed uh, trailers, usually made to haul uh, cars or uh, big equipment like lawn mowing equipment or moving, or if you have like stuff for big yard sales or garage sales or whatever, this is usually what these things are designed for. And then for your truck, or for your food truck, then you can customize this, build a window, put in your plumbing, your electrical, uh, et cetera. Uh, besides the enclosed uh, cargo trailers, you have the semi-open animal carriers. Uh, some people convert horse uh, trailers. This is pretty common to a food truck or a, a coffee truck. Um, the benefit being these usually look pretty cool. Uh, the enclosed cargo trailers are kind of boring looking and you have to kind of spice them up to be uh, pleasing to look at. But for the animal trailers, they have a little bit more um, kind of intrigue there. So it might be a little bit more uh, pleasing for customers to want to come up to something that looks like that. Uh, the downside to the uh, open trailer is that when the weather comes in, whether it's snow, rain, big winds, uh, you might have to spend more time and effort covering those or finding an enclosed place to keep them. And that might be a little bit more challenging. Uh, third is that you have travel trailers. These are designed when people like take camping trips and they tow behind um, these things in a truck to live in for the weekend or even longer. Um, but people usually for the food trucks get older ones, maybe in like the 50s, 60s, 70s. They kind of have this cool retro look um, that you'll have to then go in and kind of modify the inside so that it'll be um, customizable for your food business. Uh, similar to the animal trailer, it's kind of unique looking, um, kind of craftsy, boutique-like, um, and you can get these usually used for relatively uh, cheap, uh, but they may have water damage or other kinds of damage that you're going to have to look in. So again, similar to what I said earlier, make sure you go out and you look at these, you inspect them beforehand to make sure you know what you're getting yourself into before making this big purchase. Um, with these, similar to the trucks, they come in all different sizes and shapes, so make sure that you know what you want or you go out and see it beforehand. Take measurements of the height, the width, make sure your equipment's going to fit plus yourself. And also consider how many uh, axles and wheels it's going to have. Uh, single axles can be good for lighter, but if you're going to be hol uh, holding a lot of heavy equipment uh, or you're going to want something that's a little bit more stable, then you might want the dual axle. Um, so this kind of uh, covers the topics of the number of axles, the amount of wheels, the trailers versus the trucks. And now we're going to get into how much is this all really going to cost you. I'm going to give you legitimate numbers from what I've looked at when starting my own business, as well as professionals that I've talked to that have bought their own food trucks from what I've read online and from also real quotes that I've gotten from companies when I was trying to, to buy something for myself. So let's start with brand new trucks. So this goes for box trucks or the vans. If you're gonna get something smaller without tons of bells and whistles, you just want the standard base equipment. I'm trying to get something for as most cost effective as you can while buying new, you're going to be at about $80,000. If any of you can get everything ready to go for under that, please send me a message uh, and call me out because I don't believe you. I think that's a bunch of BS. I don't think that you can do it. If you can, I'm glad to hear it and please tell us all about it. But 80,000 is pretty much the benchmark of where you're going to start for buying something brand new, ready to go. If you're gonna want a larger truck and you do want all the bells and whistles, you want the top of the line equipment, you want everything to be able to pass all the inspections in all 50 states, you can go up to over $200,000. You can spend a lot of money um, and if you are a large business or you're expecting to make huge profits, this might be good for you. Uh, you can have everything exactly to your specifications. You can attract a lot of customers. You can make money, um, but that is a larger risk. When I started this video, I said it can be a low risk investment, but in my opinion, if you're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars, that risk gets higher, but you can spend it if you want. It's out there. Uh, there are options. I'll put links into where you can get these things up over hundreds of thousands of dollars. They do look really cool, um, but that's a lot of money. 
buying something new does give you the peace of mind if something does break down you usually be able to be under warranty so that you can fix it and there's less of a chance of something breaking down but if you are someone that wants to be more cost effective and you want to test the used market you can pay uh, sometimes a lot less than half of what a new truck is going to be um, there's a huge range depending on how used you want it like if you want something that is just used for a couple of months or maybe a couple of years old but it's still shiny everything still works great you're going to be spending a lot of money and if it was one of those ones that originally cost hundreds of thousands of dollars you can get it used but it's going to cost you upwards of ninety thousand dollars um, but if you want to save money, you want to get something smaller, you want to get something that's kind of been around the block a few times, uh, you can get something for cheap, a uh, handful of thousand dollars, but I would be very shocked if you are going to find anything used and ready to go for under five grand. If you can, please send me a message, but I think you're lying. I don't think you're going to be able to do it. I think in order to get a food truck ready to go, you're going to have to spend at least a minimum of $15,000 used. And that's to get the truck up and running, uh, passing inspections uh, for the truck, making sure it's roadworthy. Uh, also for your food, making sure you have correct plumbing and electricity, making sure you're ready to serve to customers. You're going to be spending at least $15,000 used. Now let's talk a little bit uh, about the trailers, because these are less expensive than the trucks. But similarly, if you get something new, you're going to be spending more money. Uh, if you get a smaller trailer, uh, maybe single axle, something that's about 12 foot long, six to seven feet high, so you can fit in there. Um, but kind of just starting out with all the base equipment, you can get away uh, with getting a new trailer for about 15 grand. Uh, but if you want something a little bit larger, maybe dual axle, uh, you're going to want a nice paint job on there. You're going to want all the counters customized. You're going to want to have all of the best hot water heaters. You're going to want the best plumbing. You're going to want uh, roof for ventilation, you're going to want a nice stove top, all of that stuff, you're going to be paying more. Um, for a brand new trailer, uh, I've seen those uh, as high as sixty to $70,000, um, but safely to get a new trailer that's a little bit larger, maybe about the fifty to $55,000 price range is what you're looking at for a, a new trailer. For used trailers, um, you can get pretty good discounts, uh, but I kind of think that the more that you spend, the less work that you're going to have to do. So you can go out there and find right now a used trailer for about the two to three thousand dollar range. That would be kind of roadworthy. That has decent tile tires on it. That has working running lights. If you get something cheaper than that, I would wouldn't feel safe getting that thing on the road. Um, you're going to have to spend at least a couple thousand dollars to get a trailer that's ready to go on the road. But if you're a great mechanic and you're willing to put in the work and you just want the skeleton of it, yeah, you can get a trailer for a couple hundred bucks. But I think realistically, a couple thousand dollars is what you're going to be spending for a used trailer. And then to customize that, to have it meet your needs, or if you're going to want to buy something that already is kind of ready to go, a used trailer comfortably I think you're going to be ready to sell at about seven thousand dollars but again depending on how much equipment you want in it all the bells and whistles I keep saying that I haven't really done it before with bells and whistles when it comes to the food uh, standard I look at that as like you know the the top of the brand like Vikings Wolves like the commercial things like perfect ready to go out of the box you're going to be spending a lot more money but if you want to just start out with you know kind of the lower end uh, things that are still great and they'll pass inspection and they'll get food, tasty food out to your customers. For a used trailer, I would be comfortable at about the $7,000 starting mark, but you can spend upwards of $25,000 even on a used uh, trailer ready to go start serving your customers. Uh, so to see uh, or kind of prove that I'm not BSing you, I'm going to talk about Cafe Lomas and how much it started for my business. Well, first, I bought my 1970 Chevy P30 uh, step van. This is kind of like a hybrid. Now I would think it would be a box truck, but that, back then it's called a step van. I bought it for $6,800. The next big ticket item that I spent was on my espresso machine and my grinder. That was $6,700. My third big ticket item was my generator. That was $2,300. 
Next was for customizing. This was for the paint job. This was for the electric work that needed to go into it, the plumbing, the countertops, all of that sort of stuff. That set me back another $5,000. And then the first couple weeks in business, I already was hit with repairs. Even though I tried to do my due diligence and looked at a bunch of different trucks in the area, I thought that I found a really good one. Um, it has been good for my needs, but it broke down with some pretty costly repairs within the first couple of weeks. I needed to put on two brand new tires. I needed to get a new starter. I needed to get a new carburetor, an intake manifold, spark plug wires. I'm still ordering some new parts for the ignition, uh, distributor, all of these different things. And so far, it set me back about $2,500. So all in all, what it's cost me to get up in business and running for my first uh, month has cost me $23,000. I'm trying my best and I'll get into what I'm, I'm making and what you can expect to make and how soon you can recoup all these costs and start to make a profit later. But that's me from getting a used truck, um, not super bells and whistles materials. My espresso machine is pretty top of the line with the grinder, um, but everything else is pretty standard and it cost me $23,000 going the used route. If that's something that you're interested in, please leave a comment and, and, and let me know. Or if you've gotten a new trailer thinking about new, let's talk about that as well. So after talking about the money, now we're going to get into how much time, effort, and work is it going to take to get your business operational. And we're going to do this by taking a look inside my business of Cafe Lomez. So one of the first things that we're going to look at is the functionality of the truck. Uh, what I did myself versus what I went out to get outside professional help for. So let's take a look at that now. Oh, <laughs> too close. <laughs> uh, I was excited to do it. This is the 50 amp outlet. Oh. Now on this food truck, we have a lot of different accessories that are going to pull a lot of power. Uh, it takes a lot of heat and electricity to make espresso. So we've broken everything down as best we can. We've got a 60 amp panel, and this way he's able to shut off the big draw items that he won't need so much, like the water heater, so that he can run everything else at the same time five circuits total. It's all MC in here. So it's easy, flexible cable to work with. If you guys need a food truck gun, let me know. If you need some espresso, Cafe Lomez. So we've got the uh, carburetor taken off, intake manifold off, and the distributor cap looks like someone lit a piece of dynamite in there. So do you have any idea how this was still running at all? No. <laughs> so it's a miracle it was even able to get started yep. but today we're gonna have to put on a new uh, carburetor there and an intake manifold when it's uh, out we're gonna get some new spark plugs and wires and hope that everything works a little bit better oh you're almost there put your parts down there you go that looks, looks like it came from the factory, didn't it? That looks good to me. Okay, so the inside of the food truck and what I've done versus what I've had to pay uh, others to do. Uh, what I did myself was uh, complete the sink setup. So what I was able to do was I was able to get one of these online. It's a tankless hot water heater and I have the water coming in right here, and then when it's on, uh, it heats up to whatever temperature you want it, it goes down and goes into the sink. You will need a three compartment sink, where you see you have one station for the washing, here's where you rinse, and then you sanitize in this bay, and then we have our separate hand washing sink uh, over here, uh, and then on the bottom, uh, we have the tank that has the water, the water pump that pumps it through and then it collects in this one all of the tanks collect over here and this passed uh, Indiana's code but depending on what state you're in you may need p-traps um, you might need a ventilation system it just depends on what your uh, state requires uh, I installed uh, this right here which is just a portable air conditioning heating unit I put in this little insulation and cut a hole in there so it vents the cold or hot air out depending on what setting I have in here. 
Uh, I put in this uh, switch that connects to the battery for the water pump. Um, I had the electrician help with all the outlets. Uh, this is where the uh, air conditioning unit is uh, hooked up to. We also have the refrigerator here. It's got the freezer, refrigerator underneath. The most important thing for the Indiana uh, department is that you need to have your thermometer in here to let you know what temperature you're at. Uh, here we have the cash register and the square reader that we use to be able to take uh, card payments and then make change. On the serving window, uh, we have stirs. I have my uh, pen and notepad to keep notes. We give out uh, napkins, lids, sugar packs, half and half milk, or a little tip jar. Uh, this right here is an area that I can sit down in between orders. Back here we have the beignet station. Uh, I ordered these uh, stainless steel countertops online and underneath you can see where they're bolted into the wall so that they don't move while we're, while we're uh, driving. They stay stationary here. Uh, all of the electricity is hooked up through this back panel which has 240 volts going in and then it splits in two to my five different channels here that split out on the top and go over to the other side, the driver side of the truck where in the back here we have the deep frying station. We have two electric deep fryers and the ventilation system. On the bottom of the uh, section here we keep storage like the uh, containers for the beignets we have waters and the oil on the bottom we keep our cups for the espresso set up down here on this setup we have the grinder for the espresso machine here we have the espresso machine itself we keep the top the cups up on top of the cup warmer and I have my section for the flavors and syrups and the milk frothing pitchers so this is the setup of the inside of the of the truck. The only other thing I think I would probably do right now is put in a window uh, here because it's getting really cold this time of year. So when we're waiting on people, if you just have this open, it's hard for the heater to keep up. So if I had a window that opened and shut and was on like a sliding mechanism, I think that would help. So I think that's the only other thing I'm going to do to the inside in the foreseeable future. So to help get the big uh, Predator uh, inverter 9500 starting watt generator out of the back of the truck, it weighs about 250 pounds. So to make it easier, I got these long 2x8s and I put on a ramp mounting bracket here. So these get drilled in right here and then they can sit on the metal surface on the back of the truck. And you just want to line them up, make sure that they're straight. They grab on good and sturdy. Each one of them probably weighs maybe 15 pounds. Uh, they're easy enough for one person to grab. You just want to again make sure that they are the same width of the tires and that they are lined up even and they're secure on the back of the, the truck. And the generator's got pretty good wheels and these locking mechanisms that you have to make sure that they're locked when the vehicle's in motion, but unlocked when you want to get it down. And then just make sure that the wheels are again lined up to get a good contact. And then you kind of want to just make sure that it comes off nice and smooth. And then yeah, it's pretty easy. One person can manage it by themselves. Wheel it in place, put your locks back on, and it would be ready to go if you're ready to use the generator. All right, so here's Cafe Lomez out at the food zone. Uh, what's pretty cool is not only like the marketing, but uh, here you're on a pretty level surface, but I have some uh, boards that I put on here to make it a little bit more level, and I have a stabilizer jacks. Everyone has a pretty good space to come out and order. 
Uh, on the truck, we have the menu on the right side where people can get a look at what they want. The prices are up there. And then after they're waiting on us to prepare the order, they can read uh, a little bit about our story. Uh, they can know that we have social media. They can grab a water if they would like. Uh, but a little bit more for the functionality uh, is I would like to show you that we have here. What is great is they have a place where we can plug in where we don't have to use our generator. Uh, so here they have the direct 50 amp uh, service that we can plug into. We have the 50 amp, but here they also have a 30 amp outlet. They have the standard uh, household 120 or 240. They have a second uh, 50 amp outlet here and then it plugs right back into our truck so that we don't have to use the big generator today. Uh, it's good to have as a backup, um, but for today it's super quiet. We can plug right into the electricity. So after your truck is operational or maybe while it's getting operational, some things you're going to have to consider or is your branding. Uh, you're going to need to look at um, how the truck looks versus what you wear in the truck versus what's on social media. Uh, so you're going to need to create logos. You're going to need to find a company to put those on the truck or unless you can do that yourself. Uh, you're going to need to think about your um, social media pages, whether that's Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, the YouTube like we're on right now. Uh, or if you're going to create your own website, uh, how are you going to link these things across multiple uh, digital businesses like Google, uh, Yelp, uh, Bing, Yahoo, make sure that all of your search engine optimization uh, is up to snuff. These are all really important factors uh, into creating a successful business. So make sure you stay on uh, these to make sure that you are promoting your events, you're interacting with customers, um, and that they have the ability to reach you and that you can respond to them in a timely manner and stay organized as to making sure you know what events you have coming up, making sure you can plan events, uh, make sure you're strategic in the way that you go about this. Um, what I mean by that is, are you going to say for every event, you're just going to charge individual customers or are you going to have set minimums um, so that a company maybe will hire you out for a certain rate per hour or how many customers you're going to serve? Uh, these are things that you're going to need to think about uh, in order to make sure that you're A, making uh, money, but also B, that you are um, having a fair price point so customers are happy and that businesses will come and, uh, and request you to come out to their site. Uh, but also be fair, you know, like if, if you're setting the bar really low, then that's what those businesses are going to expect. And it's going to create tension for you and that business. You're not going to be making as much money and the business is going to say, well, why are all the other food trucks in the area not charging the same price as this other one? So set realistic uh, expectations for yourself and for uh, making sure that you are representative of the kind of food truck culture niche in your area. So now we're going to get into the kinds of permits or permissions that you're going to need to start your food truck business. Uh, the first thing that you're going to need to do is to create your food truck business. You're going to have to come up uh, with a name and then you're going to have to register that name and register the business. And you're going to have to think about, is this going to be a simple doing business as? Is this going to be a partnership? Is this going to be an LLC? Um, and what factors are going to help determine this is like things like if you have employees, um, if you're already looking into what kind of taxes you're going to have to pay depending on what state you're operating in, but you're going to have to first make that decision and then you're going to have to register your business with the government and you're going to have to get a tax EIN number. And that number is important for your next step is to getting a bank account. In order to first start out, unless you're going to be all cash, uh, you, I advise against that. I highly advise to be able to take cards or even if you have cash, you're going to, need to be able to put it into a bank account somewhere that's separate from your personal account. So once you get that tax ID number, then you're going to take that to a bank and you're going to open up a business banking account. I got my business banking account for Cafe Lomez done with Chase Bank. And doing this, um, it was able, I was happy with Chase because of two things. One is if in your business account, you keep a certain balance in there for the first month or two, then they give you a $300 reward bonus. 
And in addition to that, if you get a Chase Business credit card, if you spend a certain amount, then you get cash back and rewards points. For me, it was $750 cash back. So when I made some of my first big purchases and got that $1,000 cash back, plus having money in my bank account, that was another $300, I was getting over $1,000 from Chase within the first couple months for meeting certain requirements that help my business tremendously pay back some of the first costs that I have to help keep my business uh, going while I'm first starting out and getting my first customers. So again, create your business, get that EIN number, and then get your bank account. Next, before you start uh, going out there and selling, you're going to want to get insurance. You're going to want to get two different kinds of insurance. The first one is you're going to want to get insurance is on your vehicle. If hell, a tree falls on it or you're driving to an event and you know you have a massive uh, wreck, uh, there's a fire or whatever happens, you want to be covered. You don't want to get into this, be stressed out enough as a business owner of starting everything, uh, coming up with a menu, getting out there to your customers. But if something goes horribly wrong, you want your truck or trailer to be covered. So first you need insurance on your truck or your trailer. The second thing you're going to need insurance on is your actual business. And this protects you as the business owner. Um, one of the most famous examples um, is the customer within the coffee business is that they sued McDonald's because the coffee was too hot. So say I serve a cup of a coffee, someone burns their mouth. Maybe it wasn't extremely super hot, but to this person it was, and they get upset or they have to go to the hospital, something happens to them and then they come after me and they try to sue me for a million dollars. If they sue me personally for a million dollars, I'm not a millionaire, that would ruin me for the rest of my life. But the insurance company, they have things to deal with this. They insure your business in case something happens with a customer, they come after uh, you, you'll be covered and the insurance will deal with it. You'll also need insurance for your business if you're going to be doing private events or things for your local government. Like I'm doing a uh, event at the ice skating rink and the local city, they want to be listed as additionally insured on my insurance. So for my business insurance, I have State Farm. I called up my State Farm agent and I said, look, I'm going to be doing this event. The city needs to be additionally insured uh, as part of that. They want to be covered. They don't want to be liable for if anything happens while my business is operating there. So my insurance agent added the city as additionally insured on my policy, and I should be ready to go. I get a copy of that, I send it over, um, and hopefully that takes care of everyone. So that's something that you should consider too while starting your food truck business is making sure that your truck or trailer is insured and also that you have the business insurance. So next, some of the other permits that you're going to need is I think the biggest one is the health uh, permit for the health departments making sure that you know how to handle whatever foods that you're serving, uh, making sure that your truck has all the things that are necessary, whether it's that's the correct plumbing, the correct number of sinks. You usually need to have your own hand washing sink, and then you need to have three separate sinks, one in order to wash your dishes, one in order to rinse them, and one to sanitize them. They all need to be separate, they all need to be labeled. Uh, you also need to make sure that your um, sink that you get your water from is smaller than the wastewater one. The wastewater uh, needs to be larger. You need to figure out ways on how you're going to um, correctly uh, dump these. So those are some of the things that you'll need to be able to pass your health inspections. Uh, you need to make sure that if you're keeping food on the truck that it's in a refrigerator that has a thermometer, um, that you can keep it at the correct uh, temperatures. So you'll need to go through all these different things with your health departments to get that certification. So that's the first major permit that you're going to need. Uh, the second permit that you uh, will most likely need is something with your local uh, city or state in order to sell the food in those different locations. Some require just a city permit, other requires a city and a state permit, and some will also require one if it's on commercial property. So say that I wanna set my food truck up uh, where there is a, a gas station. I would first need to know that gas station owner, come up with a contract with that gas station owner, present that contract and agreement that might list things of when I'm going to be setting up, where the truck is going to be, the hours, um, and then having both the signatures that that business owner and me are both on the same page with this, present that to the planning and zoning uh, committee in the city, 
Um, they will then do a background check on me, my business, make sure everything's good, make sure that all parties are okay with it. It usually costs, well, for me, the, in a year, it's about $250 uh, in order to get that from the city to be able to work at that location. Uh, and when you're doing all of these different permits and contracts and agreements, and they vary from city to state to county to township, it's frustrating. And you just have to try to take a deep breath and deal with it because honestly for the most part they are screwing you over and they want money and they want to be covered and they want to know what's going on the only one that in my opinion really makes the most sense is for the health department you want to make sure that you're getting out food to your customers that is sanitary um, but besides that why each little different city has its own separate one and why you're going to have to pay all of these fees and permits to everyone else. They just want money. They, they, they want to get paid. They want to know where you're at. They want control. And you just have to deal with it. It stinks. It's frustrating. Um, but it's just part of the process. And as you're going into this, if you've already done this before and you're a veteran, you know about this. Uh, maybe I'm complaining about it too much, like if you've already been through the process, everything's in place and you're just kind of on a renewal system. But if you're getting into this for the first time, hopefully um, me explaining all of this, you're going to know what to get into. And I hope it's easier for you. Uh, I hope it's not that difficult. Um, but for me, it has been very frustrating with having to get all of these different uh, permits and sometimes they're different depending on what kind of event you're doing if it's private if it's public if it's at a park if it's on public land if it's a commercial lot all of these different things do matter so you you'll have to get into it and as being a business owner as an entrepreneur you have to wear all kinds of hats you have to be uh, an investor you have to be a spokesman you have to be a website designer you have to be a cook a chef uh, you have to be uh, food prep, you have to be customer service, front of house, back of house. You have to be sometimes in the case of your own lawyer, you, you do your own insurance, your own banking. It can be frustrating and when these curveballs come at you like with all these different permits, just try to take a deep breath and you will be able to get through it. And once you hit those kind of honey holes and you're making a lot of money and you have a lot of customers, everything's working good. It, it is worth it and you'll feel like it was all justified but on those um, kind of slow days you're like why did I go through all of this for this one permit that's just kind of part of the process that we deal with in the food truck industry so now this is a question that many of you might be interested in is about the money is how much money can you expect to make well there's a lot of factors that go into this and I'm just going to use my business as an example as having one uh, food truck that's just starting out selling coffee and beignets and this can change depending on if you're selling um, higher ticket items like um, lunch menus we have a lot of barbecue trucks being here in the Midwest and just one barbecue truck per customer makes about three times the amount as I do per sale so it depends on what kind of food you're selling and how many trucks you have one of my good friends has two trucks operating so it might be safe to say that it's he makes double the, the money. But with having one food truck selling coffee and beignets, uh, in my first month, I made $7,000. That was a pretty good month, um, just starting out uh, in October. I'm hoping that next October, after I've been around, I can make uh, more than that. But we had a lot of festivals. The weather was nice. So I think I had some things uh, on my side uh, for the better. Um, this last month hasn't been all that great i've been i've had to deal with rain i've had to deal with wind i've had to deal with snow so on a nice day where everything's set up we get all of our devices working properly and we're expecting to have a pretty good day but sometimes things come up out of your control that keep it slow so i can show you to the window if you can see out here it's snowing so you know people sometimes don't like to get all cold and wet in the snow it doesn't have anything to do with you or your business per se but sometimes weather or factors out of your control can impact on whether it's going to be a good or a bad day or not oh, um, and it's been not so great I've made only about half of what I did the uh, the first month 
Um, that kind of goes into some of the factors of determining how much money you're going to make and what goes into good and bad, and it's, it's sometimes very seasonal. Uh, the weather is a huge part of this. If you have a food truck, you are outside and you're expecting that your customers most likely are going to have to get out of their cars. And depending on where you're set up, you might not have the ability to have like a drive through. So you're going to be kind of dependent upon how many customers are going to go through the effort of going outside if the weather isn't that great. And I hope that you have diehard customers and are willing to put on a coat or go out when it's cold or when it's snowy or when it's rainy. Um, but a lot of times they will not do that. So there's a chance that you've done everything right. You have good marketing, you have good products, you have a good truck, you have a good location. But if it's raining, that's out of your control and you're not going to make that much money. Um, or, you know, something might happen, you might have something wrong with the truck, you can't get to an event and that's going to hamper uh, or what's going to, to, to happen. Um, other months, um, they might have a lot of uh, festivals in your area, whether this is the summertime and you have things like July 4th, or whether it's the seasonal and you have like fall festivals, whether it's like the October times, um, or whether it's Thanksgiving or New Year's, or if you get into certain circuits like the wedding uh, circuits and you can do those kind of wedding events, or you can do catering, or you can do things like baby showers or birthday parties, like those are things that will be more high ticket uh, kind of days. Uh, or if you can get in with uh, businesses, um, specifically big plants, whether it's like big Amazon plants or um, auto manufacturers or wherever there's a warehouse that has hundreds of workers, if you can get in there like on their lunch breaks or before they start their shift or after their shift and you can be set up, you can have a rush of uh, workers that are really hungry or thirsty or whatever you sell and you can have an excellent day. It's like, so today we're at a little tent event uh, here at Raven Goodyear Tire. So hopefully throughout the day we'll uh, get some more people to come on in. As you can see, there's a little bean toss going on and people playing games, trying to get their tires at discount prices and they can get a cup of coffee at the same time. So these are kind of opportunities you gotta take advantage of to try to go out for events. It's almost like fishing. You have to go where the fish are. You have to find that honey hole uh, hopefully a lot of people will come out. It's a nice sunny day, uh, get their tires, and then have a nice cup of coffee. Um, but if you just set up kind of randomly somewhere and nobody knows that you're there, it's bad weather, be prepared to have a pretty crappy day. So these are some of the kind of factors that determine how much money uh, you can make. So a little bit more into my own business. I already mentioned that the first month I brought in $7,000. And what I've been kind of averaging is about $500 per event. And that was the first month that was, uh, that was good. Uh, that was October uh, 2022. Um, in November 2022, the next month, I've been at about half that. Um, when I've gone out, my average is, is right around two to 200 to $250. Um, and two of the events, I hardly made anything. One event, I was out there for over two hours and I only had five uh, customers. Uh, I appreciate those five that came out, don't get me wrong, and we did our best to make sure that they had, had great customer service, great products, but when you go through the process of starting this mobile business, um, you get everything you know, prepped hours in advance, you get everything on the truck, you drive out there, it's a cold day, you have to open everything, get set up to only have five customers and then have to pack everything up and bring it back home and makes you think to yourself, geez, like, is this really worth it? So those kind of days are tough. Uh, be prepared to have them. Uh, and again, this is kind of the passion part of it. You have to be able to struggle through those tough days in order to get to the better ones. So while this month I'm looking like I'm going to do about half that of what I did the first month, it's looking like I'm only going to bring in about $3,000 uh, this second month um, with an average of about $200 to $250 per event. Um, fortunately, I've already booked a couple of events for December that are looking to rebound that pretty quickly. Um, I'm going to be doing uh, events at the local ice skating rink. I'm going to be doing some events for private uh, companies. Um, so December is looking like it's going to peak back up there with October, where I'm going to be looking to make about six to seven thousand dollars in the month of December. So for me, if this kind of keeps going, 
I'm thinking within the third, fourth, but definitely by the fifth month of um, being open, as long as there's no more drastic thing wrong, things that go wrong, that I'm going to uh, pay off all my costs and to start making a profit. So hopefully you can see that with my business kind of model. If you do it the way that I did it, get a used truck, um, get things kind of standard, get out there on the road, do your best to market, go to events. Within four to five months, you can already be profitable and pay off everything. You own the entire business, you're bringing in money, and then if you want to, keep on going. Or if at that point you might want to sell, you'll have paid off everything, you own everything, you can bring in money when you sell it all, and it's a pretty successful business. So I'll get to what I do after I've been profitable and make a follow-up video. But for now, hopefully this helps you get a better idea on some real numbers and how much money you can expect to make if you do the similar route. Uh, or if you get everything brand spanking new, you pay a little bit more money, you pay more for marketing, maybe you can make double or triple uh, what I'm doing. So now I'll reflect for a second and think about would I change anything? Would I do anything different? Um, am I happy with the truck that I got? Or should I have gotten a trailer? Did I do a good job painting? Should I have paid someone else? All, all these kinds of different kind of components I will try to answer uh, now. So first, I am happy with going with a used truck. Um, I think that a trailer would have complicated things. Um, I would have needed to keep another uh, big sort of a pickup truck or something to be able to tow that trailer. Um, it would have just added more confusion to have two vehicles, I am happy with going with the, the used truck. Um, a, use, or a, a new truck wasn't even in the cards for me. I don't have that much money. I couldn't have gotten approved for a giant bank loan uh, to get a brand new truck. So new was out of the option. So a used truck was fine for, for me. Um, I would say that if I did it again, I would have haggled a little bit more uh, with the previous uh, owner uh, when I bought the truck. Um, I was a little kind of too quick to get into that deal to, to get that truck right away. Um, it's had a lot of uh, issues that I could have been a little bit more aware of um, if I maybe had, had gone and checked it out with a mechanic or someone that knew a little bit more about the older um, small block engines that could have kind of combed through everything before purchasing it um, because I have had to pay out a couple thousand dollars out of pocket within the first month getting it you know kind of to the point where it's reliable where I thought it was going to be so I would have maybe asked if I could have got the truck for you know maybe another fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars cheaper then it would have really been in that uh, sweet spot so I think that's the biggest thing I would have done was to try to push a little bit harder to get a, a better deal on the um, initial uh, truck that I, that I bought. Or there were another at least two trucks in the area that were in a similar price uh, category that maybe I should have spent a little bit more time and maybe gotten a, a different one, but something that was within that five to eight thousand uh, dollar price range that I wish was a little bit more reliable that I didn't have to put as much money into. Uh, as far as the, the paint job, uh, I am happy with the way that it turned out, um, but I think that that was just my business in particular. On the older 1970 uh, truck, I think that doing it myself with the roller and stuff by hand and going to a local shop just to get the logos worked out great uh, for me because it kind of fits in the aesthetic that I, I wanted. Um, but if I did have a newer truck, I would want to either put a wrap around the entire thing or I would have hired someone out uh, professionally. So from what I did, I am happy with it. Um, I'm still going to have to make a couple touch-ups now that the weather's changing. It's a little colder. There's a couple uh, cracks starting to form in the paint and I have the, um, the paint that I bought from Home Depot with me and I still have some brushes that I can make uh, little touch-ups as that stuff kind of happens. But I am happy uh, with what I did with the paint and the logo, so I wouldn't uh, change that. Uh, for the equipment, um, as of now, I am happy with the uh, espresso machine that I bought. Um, but since buying it, I have seen a couple other ones that I think would have worked for the same purpose that I'm doing that I could have got for cheaper. So. 
I'm still kind of up in the air on if I am really happy with the espresso machine that I got versus if I would have gotten another one. I'm going to give it a little bit more time uh, and I'll make a follow-up video when I review uh, the espresso machine I got for the, for the truck. Um, but for now, that's something that I am still kind of on the fence about is if I am okay with the espresso machine that I got. And the second one is regarding the, uh, the fryers that I have on the truck. That I think I would have made a change if doing it again. I think if doing it again, I would have gotten a larger uh, propane based fryer instead of the electric ones. The electric ones, they take up a lot of electricity. They're a little bit smaller. So I think I would have gotten the larger uh, propane fryer. And I think I would have put in the bigger hood vent. I have a really small hood vent now. It works for what I'm doing, but if I do a larger event and I have tons of orders coming in and they're all in the fryer and the smoke's going in there, I think I would have, you know, it would be easier if I have the larger fryer with the bigger uh, hood vent. So the equipment, I do think I would have made uh, a couple more changes. So um, DIY versus what I had, uh, you know, help with. Um, for the electric, uh, I am happy that, uh, that Joe, as you've seen in the, the video, did come out to help with the elect electric work. Um, that's something that on this first truck, it was out of my league. Uh, I have a 50 amp, as you've, you've seen, and I wouldn't have known how to split those cables coming in, the, which circuit breaker was best for that, um, how to properly wire everything. That's something that I'm glad that I had Joe's help for. Uh, but now that he has helped me, if I'm ever going to do this in the future, I do feel confident that I'll do my best to DIY it uh, going forward. Um, for the sinks, uh, that's something that I felt comfortable doing DIY. Um, but if I'm going to expand my business and go into other uh, states that might um, have higher uh, restrict, not restrictions, but requirements for what they need for their uh, plumbing system. I am not an expert plumber. I get a little bit uh, worried when there's ever little leaks and what threads are the correct size and, and what tapes I might need or how I'm going to need to cut something or the different kinds of water heaters. Like that's all kind of tricky to me. So if I do need any plumbing uh, work done, I think I might hire out uh, a professional to make sure that it meets those standards on the first time and that I don't need to take seven, seven different trips to the hardware store and pull my hair out and have multiple inspections and I might miss events because of it. Um, so that's something I think I will hire out uh, to the, the next times. And, and I also need to get better at these to kind of make sure that I can do them myself to help with cost, help with time, um, to be uh, expert at doing everything in the truck, but also mechanic wise on the truck. Uh, that's been on the engine. Um, that's been costly having to have mechanics come out to do electrical wiring work, replacing the carburetor and all that kind of thing. I'm, I'm going to try my best to do better at that so I can do DIY in the future. So for me, I felt pretty good with where I'm at, I could have made a couple different changes with the pricing on the truck, maybe got a different espresso machine, and I want to try to get better at doing more DIY myself. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. We went over uh, all the main categories uh, in depth on how to start your own food truck. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Please leave a comment. Uh, please uh, like. Let's engage. If you have any questions for me to do a follow-up video, uh, please uh, do that. I thank you very much for your time and your patience, and I hope you found this helpful. Uh, have a great day, and please check out some of my other videos. Thank you very much.